Hello, and welcome to Nostalgic Mystery Radio. I'm your host, Stevie K, and it's my honor to bring you the radio shows of yesteryear. For today's episode, I bring you The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes in Colonel Warburton's Madness, originally aired September 10th, 1945 where Watson's ex-commanding officer alarms his family due to an interest in spiritualism. So sit back and relax, and I hope you enjoy this Nostalgic Mystery Radio. Thank you for listening. Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invites you to listen to Dr. Watson as he tells us about another exciting adventure he shared with his old friend, that master detective, Sherlock Holmes. And you know what I wish I could share with you sometime? a bottle of Petri California Sherry. Have you ever tasted Petri Sherry? It's just perfect before dinner. Why, that Petri Sherry can change the usual before dinner lull into a special event, and that's a fact. Just look at the clear color of Petri Sherry. It's a deep, rich amber, clear and cheerful looking. And wait till you taste it. That's when you find out for sure just how good a wine can be. That's when you find out just what I mean when I say that The flavor of Petri Sherry comes right from the heart of the grape. Try Petri Sherry by itself, or with hors d'oeuvres or canopies or whatever you call those little cocktail sandwiches. And say, if you like your sherry dry, well then Petri California Pale Dry Sherry is the sherry for you. Just be sure the label says Petri, the proudest name in the history of American wines. And now let's look in on our old friend, Dr. Watson. Doctor? I'm out here on the patio, Mr. Bartell. Come out and join me. <laughs> Quiet, Winnie. Quiet. Down, down, Monty. <laughs> I see the welcoming committee's here. <laughs> this little scoundrel. They begin to think they own this patio. Scoop them off the chair, Mr. Bartell, and, and settle yourself down. All right. Off you go, boy. Off you go. Go on. Off you go. That's it, my boy. As a matter of fact, it's rather appropriate that the puppies should be here tonight. As in the story that I'm going to tell you, a dog played a most prominent part. A dog? What kind of a dog, Doctor? Now, 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 my boy, don't get me anticipating my story. For once, I'm going to start at the beginning. Which was? On a summer morning in 1890, not long after my marriage. I'd gone back to my private practice, you know, and Sherlock Holmes was living alone in our old Baker Street rooms. You still saw him, I suppose. Indeed I did, Mr. Bartell. In fact, occasionally I even persuaded him to forego his bohemian habits so far as to visit my wife and me. But to get back to my story, I'd been exceptionally busy that summer, and Constance was feeling rather, shall we say, nervy and and run down. So much so that Mary, oh, (laughs) Mrs. Watson, persuaded me to take a fortnight's holiday. We went down to the charming little village of Taplow on the lower reaches of the River Thames. But, as so often happens, the best laid schemes of mice and men gang after glare. I guess the holiday backfired on you, Doctor, and you found yourself involved in a mystery. Maybe a mystery calling for the aid of your old friend, Sherlock Holmes? Quite correct, Mr. Bartell. We'd only been down there a couple of days when the trouble began. In fact, the whole thing became so involved that I thought the best thing to do was to put the whole strange story in a letter to Sherlock Holmes. This I did. And I can imagine how he chuckled when he read my name. Dear old Watson, seems to be a little out of his depth. My dear Holmes, I need your help, or at least your advice. Two days down here, and I've become involved in a most unusual problem. It began this morning when Mary and I were out for an after-breakfast stroll. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, and there seemed every indication of it being a happy and careful. You know, Mary, I've always thought up to now that Barney was rather a silly word. (laughs) I still do, John, dear. Nevertheless, it's the only possible word that describes a day like this adequately. Very well, dear, it's balmy. Personally, I'm so happy to see you relaxing that I don't care what the weather's like. You've been working much too hard. Yes, it's been a busy year. Yes, and last year Sherlock Holmes monopolized most of your time. 
At least I've got you to myself for once. <laughs> you dear little thing, you... You've always been rather jealous of my association with Holmes, haven't you? Not jealous, dear, but I must confess his influence on you wasn't entirely for the good. He had a habit of keeping you out all night. Well, you should be used to that, dear. After all, it happens often enough in my practice. True, John, but on those occasions I know where you are and don't worry about you. And again, you've copied so many of Mr. Holmes' eccentricities. Hmm? Keeping your tobacco in a Persian slipper, for instance. <laughs> and, uh, oh, John, look down. Do you see that woman walking across the field towards us? Yes, well, what's the matter? Do you know her? I'm not sure, but I think it's Ellen Warburton. I believe she does live somewhere near here. And who is Ellen Warburton? An old friend of mine. She's frightfully clever and advanced. She's interested in women's suffrage and all sorts of things. Oh, sounds dreadful. Imagine giving women the right to vote. Their place is in the home. It is Ellen. 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 Ellen Warburton. Oh, how are you? Very nice to see you again. I'm Mary Watson now. This is my husband. How do you do, Miss Warburton? How do you? Uh, how do you do? Mary, I'd heard that you'd married. Aren't you a medical detective or something, Mr. Watson? <laughs> Not quite, dear. Uh, I see... hold the degree of Doctor of Medicine from the University of London, madam. But he's helped the great Sherlock Holmes on many of his cases. Well, that's how I've heard of him, then. Do you mind if I walk with you a little way? Of course not, Ellen. Come along. Uh, do you live near here, Miss Warburton? About four miles away, Doctor, at Chevy oh, Grange. I'm a glorified housekeeper for my uncle, Colonel Warburton. Oh, dear, that sounds rather dull for you. As a matter of fact, the state of my uncle's health at the present moment makes it anything but dull for me. That's why I asked if I might walk with you for a way. Well, what's the matter with him, Ellen? He's going mad. Before my eyes. And I can do nothing to help him. Mad? Oh, come now, Miss Warburton, surely you... Doctor, I'm not an hysterical girl. In fact, I regard myself as something of a scientist. I studied physics for a number of years at Bristol University. And I tell you that my uncle is going insane. What are the symptoms? Most of the time, he's perfectly normal. But when these attacks are on him, he gets in the most frightful rages and says the strangest things. He's even complained of hearing a shrill, piping whistle that comes out of nowhere. I can't hear it, nor can anyone else. But uncle gets into the most dreadful state. I wonder... Would you have a look at him for me, Dr. Watson? Well, I don't... Of course, feel... John will do everything he can. Thank you so much. Then supposing you both come over... So, my dear Holmes, at 7 o'clock this evening, we found ourselves approaching Chevy Grange. It was rather a forbidding-looking place, covering a little more than an acre, I should say. As we stood waiting for admittance, I must confess that I was not entirely... Oh. Gloomy-looking place, isn't it, Mary? It is a little forbidding, John, dear. Oh, dear. What's that? Sounds like a tom-tom. Someone singing a weird chant. Seems to be coming from the direction of that barn over there. It doesn't seem quite appropriate, dear, does it? I mean, not in the heart of Buckinghamshire. Why not knock on the door again, John? Yes, it's all right, I will. Perhaps they didn't hear it. Oh, oh, they did. Yes. It's Dr. and Mrs. Watson, my good man. Acker's the name, sir. Come in, please. The Colonel's expecting you, sir. He's in the study. This way, sir. By the way, Hacker, as we were waiting outside the front door, we heard a strange chant, and it sounded as if someone was beating a, a tom-tom. Oh, that, sir. That was Miss Narda. You'll be hearing more of her. Beginning. Let's see what happened next. This uh, very unpleasant fellow hacker showed us into the study where we met Colonel Warburton. First, it was hard to believe that he was a sick man. He looked well enough and his conversation was sprightly. Spent most of his army life in Africa as military governor in a Zulu district. And the African spears and other trophies that lined his study walls bore mute evidence to his past life. He encouraged me to tell him some of my own army experiences. Oh, dear. Poor fellow. Ready, there I was, Colonel Warburton, on the howdah of this wretched elephant. The river was a raging torrent and I couldn't get the confounded animal to budge. Well, <laughs> I'm a pretty strong swimmer, you know. Won several cups of swimming, as a matter of fact. Of course, I was a much younger man then. Uh, and John, I... dear. Yes, ma'am? You interrupted Colonel Warburton's story. Oh, sorry. I thought this little incident would be interesting. 
Uh, do go on, Colonel. Your story was so interesting. You were telling us that you were intercepted by an African drum code message. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I, I don't want to sound conceited, but I, I doubt if there was another Englishman in the world who could have told you what those particular drum beats meant. Oh, I don't doubt that, Colonel Wolverton. Well, I'd spent a good number of years studying the native customs. I spotted the code right away. It meant that an uprising was planned to start throughout the whole province at noon the next day. Of course, I... Uh, there it is again. A devilish whistle. And you hear it, Dr. Watson? Mrs. Watson? I can hear nothing, sir. Nor can I. Of course not. No one could hear it but me. No, 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 Colonel Warpen. Don't get so excited, it's sir. It's black magic, that's what it is. Oh, really, sir? Oh, you magic. must realize that the powers of jungle witchcraft are completely unknown in this country, Dr. Watson. But I know of them. And I can think of many people who might wish to employ them against me. Come in, come in. Oh. Oh, it's you, Nada. Great Scott, she, she's... She's very beautiful. Nada, I want you to meet some friends of Ellen's. Dr. and Mrs. Watson. I am very pleased to meet both of you. How do you do? How do you do, Miss uh, Nada? Nada's father was a Chaga jeweler, one of the greatest Zulu chieftains I ever had the privilege of knowing. He did me the rare honor to swear blood brotherhood. So when the missionary sent Nada to England to complete her education, I insisted that she spend her first few months here under my wing. I... Listen... What is it, Colonel? That whistle again. For heaven's sake, say that you heard it this time. Please say that you did. I didn't hear a thing, sir. Well, I did. And I know where that sound came from. Now, now, put down that spear at once, will you, Colonel Wobbin? The Wobbin? devils are trying to kill me. I'll kill them first. No, no, no. Don't throw it, sir. Don't throw it. Someone's opening the door. Uncle! Oh, it's Ellen. Great Scott. The spear missed her by an inch. Uncle, what is it? The whistle. I heard it again, Ellen. And I'm going to find where it came from. I'm... Poor Uncle. Of course, you heard no sound. Nothing, Ellen. What can we do to help him, Dr. Watson? Well, it's hard to say, Miss Warden. I'm not sure that medical help's what she needs. Uh, he seems perfectly sane and lucid, except for these strange outbursts. But we must do something. I propose to, madam. As soon as I get back to the inn, I think I'll write to my old friend Sherlock Holmes and ask his advice. There's a problem. I can't feel that the man should be committed to an asylum, and yet, obviously, when these attacks are on him, he's as mad as a hatter. <laughs> well, fascinating problem, and one that calls for speedy action. I think a telegram to my friend Watson might help to terrify some aspects of the case. Yes. Let's see. Uh, Dr. John H. Watson, Red Lion Inn, Taplow Bucks. I suggest that you ascertain one... One important fact, does the Warburton household have a dog? <laughs> Telegraph reply, Holmes. Oh, my soul, Mary, that's a cryptic answer to my letter. Yes, dear, it is. I'm afraid Ellen will be disappointed. She's coming over to join us for lunch to see if you have any news. Well, what on earth can dogs have to do with the case? I can't possibly ma Here's Helen now. Good morning, Ellen. Hello, Mary. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, good morning. I suppose it's too early to have received any reply from Mr. Holmes. Well, as a matter of fact, I, I just got this telegram from him. You can read it if you like. I can't see it. It makes much sense, Miss Hill. But that's extraordinary. I did have a little dog. He was killed a week ago. But it didn't occur to me to tell you about it yesterday. Oh, that's amazing. How could Mr. Holmes have known about uh, it? There's very little that Holmes doesn't know, my dear. How was your dog killed, Miss Warburton? I found him in the grounds with his head smashed in by a stone. Oh, how dreadful. Who do you think did it? It might have been a poacher. And then again, it might have been... Your uncle? It's possible. When he's in those rages, I don't think he knows what he's doing. That's very important. I think I shall go and send Holmes a telegram at once. Don't wait lunch for me. Why did we have to walk over to the station, John, dear? To see if there was an answer at the station telegraph office to the wire that I sent home. Oh, but it's only 4.30, dear. It's hardly possible for him to have answered as quickly as that. In any case, they deliver the telegram to the hotel, you know. Well, it was a nice walk, my dear. Hello, there's a, a train in the station now. I wonder where it's from. Why don't you ask that porter, dear? That's not a bad idea. Uh, porter, eh? what train is this? Oh, it's the London train, sir. Right on time. Next stop, ready? Not many people getting off here, are there? Great Scott, <laughs> look who's here. Oh, dear, it's Mr. Holmes. 
And he's got a dog on a leash. Oh, well, Miss Watson, my dear fellow, how are you? Mrs. Watson, how nice to see you again. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Oh, I'm Holmes. delighted you're here, old fellow. We walked uh, to the station to see if you'd answered my telegram, and <laughs> here you are in person. <laughs> it occurred to me that I could be down here in the same time that it would take a telegram to reach you. And I decided that a day or two in the country would make a pleasant change. Apart from the fact that Colonel Warburton's problem interests me enormously. Why on earth did you bring a dog? I felt that this was a case in which a dog would be of invaluable assistance. Oh, be careful, John. Yes, look out, old chap. I, uh, I think it would be safer not to pat him. I picked him up in the Mile End Road for a couple of florins, and I fear he's a dog that should have remained in London. A singularly unattractive nature seems to have been entirely ruined by an hour's train ride. Unpleasant brute, isn't he? By the way, Holmes, what do you make of the case from my letters? Well, I should prefer to reserve my judgment until I've met the Colonel. However, I will about say one opinion. Oh, what's that? To paraphrase a proverb, don't disbelieve all you don't hear. I can't think why someone doesn't answer. They can't all be out. Well, while we're waiting, I think I'll tie the dog up to this tree here. I don't want my arrival to too much commotion. Quiet! Quiet! Well, don't you think perhaps we could try the door, John? Yes, yeah, certainly. It's a good idea. Hello, hello. It's unlocked. Then let's go in, old fellow. Let's go in. Colonel Warburton? Colonel Warburton? Ellen? Uh, Ellen? What was the name of that, that butler fellow? Hacker. Yes, of course, that's it, Hacker. Uh, Hacker! Hacker! You appear to be in an empty house. <laughs> the dog! Oh, fool that I am, I shouldn't have left him here. Come on! Ah. Oh. We're too late. Oh, the poor dog. He's been killed. Yes, poor brute. Stabbed to death by one of the Colonel's spears. That proves it, Holmes. The man is mad. I think not, Watson. I think it proves that Colonel Warburton is a great deal more sane than some of the members of his household. You'll hear the rest of Dr. Watson's story in just a few seconds. It's time for me to remind you that there's one secret every smart woman knows. Simply, good wine makes good food taste better. And by good wine, naturally, I mean Petri wine. Try a Petri wine with your dinner. If you want a wonderful red wine, try Petri California Burgundy. If you want a perfect white wine, try Petri California Sauterne. In fact, try them both. You'll agree, I'm sure, that next to your good cooking, nothing can do more for a meal than a glass of good wine. A glass of Petri wine. <laughs> And now back to tonight's new Sherlock Holmes adventure, the story of Colonel Warburton's madness. Holmes, why are we heading for this barn? Seems to me we should be back in the house. Why, old chap? I found the house empty. Besides, I thought I heard. Shh, shh, shh. What is it? Listen. It's the same sound that Mary and I heard yesterday. Once more, it's coming from the barn. Come on, Watson, but quietly. We can see through this window here. It's that Zulu girl, Nada. She's beating a drum and chanting. Who's the man with her? It's Colonel Warburton. No, it isn't. It's that servant fellow, Hacker. What in thunder is he doing here? Apparently assisting Miss Nada in some of our uh, African mysticism. It's black magic they're dabbling with, just as the Colonel said. Let's go in and catch them red-handed. No, no, no. Stay quiet. We'll talk to them soon enough. The moment I feel it's uh, much more urgent that we find Colonel Warburton. Come on. There's the colonel facing up and down in front of the house with Mary and his, and his niece, Miss Warburton. We shouldn't have left the women alone with him, you know. The man's dangerous. I don't think the women have been in any danger, Watson. John, dear, where have you been? Oh, well, Holmes and I decided we'd do take a little walk. It proved very interesting. Uh, Miss Warburton, uh, this is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. 
How do you do, Mr. Holmes? I'm so glad you're here. How do you do, Miss Warburton? And this is Colonel Warburton, Mr. Sherlock Doggo. Holmes, eh? I suppose you think I killed your wretched dog. Well, I might have done it. When I hear that whistle, something seems to snap in my brain. I might have killed it. Why doesn't your doctor friend certify me as insane? Send me where I belong before I do any worse, Debbie. Poor man. Isn't there anything you can do for him, Mr. Holmes? I most certainly will try to, Miss Warburton. What's no fellow? I wonder if you'll follow the Colonel and give him a sedative. I'm afraid he has quite an ordeal before him. Mm. What's over, Holmes? Miss Warburton, where were you when my dog was killed? Down in the greenhouse. As soon as I heard the poor animal yelping, I ran up to the house. I see. Mr. Holmes, you are going to be able to help the Colonel, aren't you? I'm convinced of it, Mrs. Watson. That is why I brought a dog with me from London. But now that he's dead, I... I must obtain another one before I can proceed further with the case. Now, I wonder where on earth I can find well, John. Look, look, huh? down by the gate, there's a little girl walking with the dog. That's Sarah Entwistle, the daughter of our neighbors. Sarah, eh? Oh, excuse me, will you, just a moment. Sarah! Sarah! Yes? Uh, oh, Sarah. Uh, Sarah, my dear, what a, uh, what a pretty dog you have there. What's his name? It's a her. Her name's Boojum. What's your name? <laughs> Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock? <laughs> That's a funny name. Yes, yes, it is, isn't it? Uh, look here, Sarah. Uh, here's a nice, shiny half-crown for you. Why are you giving me money? Well, because I love dogs, and I, I want to borrow, um, what did you call him? Boojum. Boojum, oh, yes, yes. I want to borrow Boojum for half an hour. Why? Well, I, I, want to, uh, I want to play with her, Sarah. You can play with her here. She's awfully friendly. <laughs> well, you see, I, I, I really want to take her for a nice walk. Why? She's just had one. Now, look here, Sarah. It's a beautifully shiny half-crown. Mommy's told me I mustn't take money from strangers. But I'm not a stranger. I'm a friend of Colonel Warburton. Having trouble, Mr. Holmes? Yes, I am, Mrs. Watson. You see, I, I want to give Sarah half a crown for borrowing Boojum for a short while, but she, well, she doesn't want to do it. Sarah, does Boojum like bones? Oh, yes. Loves them. We've got a lot of bones up at the house we'd like to give her. Have they got plenty of meat on them? Mm, plenty. She can have a wonderful feast, and then we'll bring her back in half an hour. All right. Go on, Boojum. Now, promise you'll bring her back in half an oh, hour. Oh, we promise. Yes, Sarah. And, and Sarah, what about the, uh, uh, what about the half crown? Well, I'll take it home and ask Mummy if I may keep it. Good. Goodbye. Goodbye. And take care of Boojum. <laughs> oh, she's a sweet little girl. Mr. Holmes, you're not going to expose Boojum to any danger, are you? None, Mrs. Watson. Otherwise, I shouldn't have borrowed her. I'm convinced that Boojum will give us the clue to what appears to be Colonel Warburton's madness. Now, let me see. We're all here. Miss Warburton, the Colonel, Miss Nara, Hacker, and the dog Boojum, yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I propose to conduct an experiment before I conduct it, I should like to point out the chronology of the events in this case. First, Miss Nutter arrived here. Mr. Holmes, you're not suggesting that... Uh, uh, please that... let me finish, Miss Nutter. First, Miss Nutter arrived here. Second, the Colonel first heard the mysterious whistle. Third, your dog was killed, Miss Warburton. Fourth, the whistling set in in dead earnest. Uh, the Colonel Warburton and Miss Warburton. Doesn't that pattern suggest anything to you? No, I... I can't say that it does, Mr. Holmes. I don't see what you're driving at. Well, more do I, Holmes. We should be more explicit. Very well, then I will. I shall uh, now conduct my experiment. I want you all to watch Colonel Warburton and the dog Boojum. Excuse me while I turn my back. Now. Oh. There it is again. That whistle. Oh, the dog heard it, too. Yes. Great oh. God, Holmes. What does it mean? It means that this wooden whistle in my hand is the answer to the mystery. The sound made by this cunningly designed instrument is above the normal range of pitch. You see, the Colonel has hypersensitive ears. But the dog heard it. Perhaps I should have said the normal human range of pitch. Then do you suppose someone has deliberately been trying to drive the Colonel mad? Of course, Mary. That's why the dogs were murdered. Whoever it was knew that a dog would give the game away. And it's not hard to guess who that someone is. Nada, this started when you came here. Is this your gratitude for the Colonel's kindness to you? Endangering his sanity with your evil black magic? That is not true. Uh, one moment, please, Miss Warburton. Miss Nutter. Yes, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Watson and I watched you in the barn some three quarters of an hour ago with Hacker. Were you engaged in practicing any form of black magic? No, no. I was praying to my old gods to save the Colonel's sanity. What were you doing there, Hacker? Don't tell me you were praying to old gods, too. Well, I used to be a chapel-going man, sir, but I don't know. No, I'm in trying something new, I always say. 
In any case, why should Miss Nada wish to persecute the colonel? It might be for some tribal revenge. Oh, but that's ridiculous, Alan. Her father and I were sworn blood brothers. Exactly, sir. No, it should be obvious. Who had a motive for making the colonel appear mad? His niece and heiress. What do you mean? She has studied physics, you will remember, and so could know about supersonic research. Possibly she was afraid the colonel might leave his estate to Miss Nada and so wished him to appear insane and thereby invalidate a new will. What? In any case, I found this whistle in a drawer in your room, Miss Warburton. Ellen! Ellen, how could you? I did it for your sake, to save you from Nada. She's just an adventuress, only you won't see it. Colonel Warburton, what action do you wish me to take regarding your niece, Miss Warburton? My niece? I have no niece, Mr. Holmes. Come, Nada, my dear. <laughs> Oh, what an amazing case, Holmes. Mary, wasn't it clever the way Holmes solved it? It was very interesting, dear. I was quite enthralled. Oh, now I think I shall return to London and let you two finish your holiday in peace. Before you do that, Mr. Holmes, there's one thing we should do. What, Mary? Boo jump. <laughs> we promised, you know. Oh, yes, yes, of course, of course. I think the three of us might walk her home. But before we do that, I suggest we rummage through the kitchen. The kitchen? What on earth for? Bones, dear. Exactly. And bones with plenty of meat on them. Say, Doctor, that was a swell story. And look, uh, you mean there really is a whistle that only dogs can hear? I thought you'd ask me that question, so I've got one of those whistles to show you. There. Well, there's nothing unusual about it. Blow it, Doctor. Well, listen, Mr. Bartell, if, if I want you to come quickly, I don't just have to whistle. All I have to say is, would anybody like a glass of Petri wine? And, hey, hey, presto, there you are. <laughs> well, can you blame me? I know a good wine when I hear it. And Petri wine sure is good wine. It ought to be. The Petri family's been making wine for generations. As you know, ever since they started the Petri business, way back in the 1800s, that business has always been family-owned and operated. So just think of all the experience the Petri family's gained. They've been able to hand on down from father to son, from father to son, all they've ever learned about the art of turning luscious California grapes into fragrant, delicious wine. So whenever you're choosing a wine, a wine to serve before dinner, with dinner, or at any time, you can't go wrong with a Petri wine. Because Petri took time to bring you good wine. <laughs> Tonight's Sherlock Holmes adventure is written by Dennis Green and Anthony Boucher and is based on an incident in the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle story, The Engineer's Thumb. Mr. Rathbone appears through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and Mr. Bruce through the courtesy of Universal Pictures, where they are now starring in the Sherlock Holmes series. The Petri Wine Company of San Francisco, California invites you to tune in again next week, same time, same station. The Petri family took the time to bring you such good wine. So when you eat and when you cook, remember Petri wine. To make good food taste better, remember... Pet, Pet, Petri wine. This is Harry Bartell saying good night for the Petri family. Sherlock Holmes comes to you from our Hollywood studios. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.